Okay, so first off, I'm going to start by making my cover for my text block. So I have my text block here. It's been glued. It's got my mull on it. So I have an already completed text block. And my book board here is 3.4 millimeters thick. You do not have to do it this thick. If you can only find something that's two millimeters thick, that's perfectly fine. I just like to have a bit of a thicker board because it makes the case a bit more sturdy. So I've got three pieces here, one for the front, back, and then I'm going to cut this one to fit the length of the spine. So for that, I'll need a ruler and I've got my pencil here, just an all HB. And then you're gonna need a very sharp X-Acto knife. And I've also got my book cloth here. For this one, we're going to need something that has a linen or a cotton or just a fabric-y feel to it. So nothing that has a gloss overlay or a waxed overlay. We're going to want something that's very rough textured because that's the way it's going to stick down with the HTV later on. Okay, so I've got here a metal ruler. You're going to want to get into the practice of using a metal ruler and not like a plastic ruler because with these sharp X-Acto knives, you will find yourself cutting into the plastic. So you're going to want to going to want to start using something that's a lot sturdier. So I've got my metal ruler here. I'm just going to put my text block on its front. Careful not to ruin the edges. And typically you're going to want to start the measurement in the middle. So the most center point of the text block is usually where it's going to be its thickest. If you've done a really good job of pressing you won't find too much of a difference between the middle of the text block to the top. And mine is pretty consistent throughout, which I'm really happy about. <laughs> Sometimes it's really big in the middle and then really thin at the top and the bottom. So it looks like it's about 4.6. So I'm going to grab one of my book boards. If you can find a cutting mat, that has this grid surface along it. I'm in Australia, so I use centimeters, but you can obviously find one that uses inches. Um, it's really, really good and helpful. Because I don't want it to be on a slant when I cut it. Okay, so it was just over four and a half. A preliminary line there. I'm just going to measure it. Six, six, perfect. Measure right at the top. Perfect fit, so that's what we want. I will then place my ruler over the line, making sure it is even. Because if it's not, we're gonna have a crooked spine and we do not want that. <laughs> and you don't need to dig hard into the book board at all. Take your time and just do a few slow, runs of the blade. If you go too fast, you'll risk cutting off like that. So just go nice and slow. And there we go. I always put it up against my book board to check. Perfect. So you can see that that you can't see any of the text block poking out. It's a really good size. So I always make sure I check after I cut it, just just in case I've gotten it wrong. <laughs> okay, so now these are our three pieces of bookboard for the cover. I'm just going to cut out a piece of my book cloth. So I don't have any excess. 
So I'm just gonna roughly place it where it should end. And then I'll just leave about an inch and a half or two inches. I'm not really good with inches. <laughs> Okay, so for the gluing, I'm going to do the bradle technique. Um, I'm going to skip ahead with that bit. If you're not a Patreon member, I do have a Patreon video where I go over the bradle technique, but I'll just skip ahead to that point. Okay, so I have finished making my case and I've let it dry. Once I let it dry, I like to just slip my text block into it, making sure that everything is all good. And yeah, it fits really nice and snug in there. The spine is a perfect fit, which is really good. So that's all good. Now, I... I'm going to be using AGFA photo printable transfer paper. So it comes in two options. You've got one for dark material and then one for light material. So for this one, I'm obviously going to be using the light one, but if you're using a black book cloth or maybe like a dark red, you might want to look for a dark version and that'll just mean the color will come up more pigmented and it won't look so translucent on your dark book cloth but I'm going to be using the light one because I've chosen a white canvas for this basically. Okay so we're going to go into the Cricut design space and then do a new project and upload. I'm going to be using my Cricut machine for this one so um, if you have a silhouette just go into their design space and do the same steps. So I'm going to be then choosing the image for my front cover. I'm really a fan of this artist's work, so I'm going to be using one of their images for my cover. I have edited out the background because I wanted to do a layering effect. So I've got the image up here and then I'm going to be using the select and erase tools to just get rid of some of the blemishes that I don't want on the cover. And then once we get there, we're going to select print then cut image. Okay, so I've got my image here. I'm gonna click add to canvas and here it is. And something I suggest you do, so this way you can get a grip of, or more of a vision of what it will look like on your bookcase is I create a square and then I make it the dimensions of my book board. So I'm going to use this as a sort of canvas of what my book cover will look like. So I'm going to drag my image over it and then I can size it according to how I want to look on my book. While I'm searching for a font, I thought this would be a really good opportunity to explain the ethics of bookbinding, and in particular fanfiction bookbinding, which I know a lot of people are here for. 
So I myself, I am a non-profit fanfiction bookbinder, which means I take commissions from time to time and I only charge for the materials cost and shipping cost. That way I make no profit whatsoever off of any of these really awesome artists and amazing writers. So if you yourself are looking to bind your own copy for personal use or to make a gift for someone for, again, personal use, that is more than fine. Go ahead, go wild, but it's always a really good practice to search for the author's website, Tumblr, Instagram, Twitter, they have a lot of social media sites, and see if they've listed anywhere that they expressly do not want you to buy their work. Some authors, they're very private about their work and they would like to keep it only on the websites where they can access them, but most authors, they're really happy when people want to have a physical copy and buy their own work. But it's just good practice to make sure you're doing your due diligence and searching for permission. Okay, I'm gonna just create an offset of the image. This is just a technique I use to try and get all of the excess text away so I can create a perfect curve so I know where to place it later when I'm ironing down the vinyl. So I'm gonna press slice, I'm gonna delete all the bits I don't need and take them away. So what I'm left is, is the little bits that say the option and then I'm gonna put the image over that. So it's still a little bit readable, but you know what it says. So this is what I'm gonna go with for my cover. Then I'm just going to create this spine text, which I'm just going to have be the title of the book in the same font. Okay, and then when we're happy with our design, I'm just going to click make, and then it's going to take us to the printing and layout section. So I'm going to set my paper as A4 because that's the paper I have. <laughs> and then I made a really, really big mistake. I should have clicked mirror because I didn't read the instructions of the paper correctly, but we'll get to that when we get to that, okay? I don't want to talk about it. And then I'm just going to send this off to my printer and load my printer with the correct paper. And after you finish loading your paper, go ahead and press print. And this is how it came out. It came out really, really good. And I'm really happy with the color and everything. There's no smudges on the paper. So it worked really, really well. Just make sure you look at the instructions on the back of the paper you get, because mine said that it has to be laid face down, which means everything is gonna be backwards. So I've done it all wrong and I cut it out and everything. So I've gone back and I've had to print it a second time. <laughs> so this is me readjusting it so that it's right this time and I've also corrected it so it's cutting for paper and not iron on like I had it before. So make sure you're not like me and you read the actual instructions on the back of the paper because I had a very hard time. <laughs> Okay, so it looked like it was cutting out fine, the tables were finally turning, and then I see this. My blade completely smudged one whole side of the image, so now I have to print a third and... I have no words. After the machine has finished cutting out all 
all of the text and the images. I'm then going to start cutting away all the negative space. This step is called weeding and basically, as I said before, it just means getting rid of all of that negative space so all we're left with is the text. After that I've got my cut out transfer paper and I'm just going to put it face down onto my bookcase. This is why it was so important to have this setting on mirror because it shows reversed when you put it down. So I've got some heat proof tape and I'm going to tape it down to my bookcase now. And then I've got my easy press. I'm going to put it on the second heat setting and then I'm just going to put some baking paper over that to keep it a little bit more protected. Then when it's heated up, I'm just going to evenly press heat across the entire surface of the transfer paper. Then I'm just going to apply the spine with the same level of heat. And then I'm moving on after it's fully cooled down to remove the protective layer on the transfer paper. And I was so stressed because I did not want it to rip at all. So I was going super slowly. You have to do the step after it's completely cooled down to the touch. Otherwise you'll just rip it off with you. So you have to go really slowly and make sure that it was cool. I'm then going to put the baking paper back over it and then just go on the lowest heat setting over the top of the transfer paper just to make sure that it's all fully secured to my book cloth. So this is what the cover looks like in the end before I've put the text block in it. I really like how it's come out. There are a few things I would change with this transfer paper. You can see that it's a little bit speckled on the edges and there's a little bit of a tear and it doesn't look so pigmented once it's put down onto the book cloth. But other than that, I really, really love the result. And this is it with the text lock in it, and I really, really love it. Um, I'm really proud of how it came out. So this is the whole book, and I love this artist's work so much, so I'm so happy that I could put one of her works on one of my covers. It's so beautiful. And that is the final product. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope this tutorial helped. Please comment down below if there was anything you were confused on. I'm heavily in those comments, so I will be answering everyone that I can. And thank you so much to my tier three patrons, my lilies. Here are all their names. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. And if you're interested in seeing any more videos on bookbinding, you can go over to my Patreon and subscribe for a monthly video tutorial. And I've got heaps up there that you can catch up on. And thank you so much for watching.